are our announcements. All our services are still suspended until further notice. We enjoin you to watch the coverage of our service every Sunday at 9 o'clock in the morning. Please visit our Facebook page, Living Word Christian Churches of Cebu International Incorporated, and our website, www.livingword.ph. You can also check out our YouTube channel to view all of our services and programs. Our sermon can also be heard over DYFR FM 98.7 on your dial every Saturday and Sunday at 8 p.m. We are also seen on Sky Cable Channel 54 from Monday to Saturday at 8 p.m. Also, please check our Facebook page every day as we have lined up posts catering to our youth, our young adults, our couples, our worship lovers, the children's ministry, and others. Likewise, let me announce that we are pre-selling my next book, More Than Enough, at 300 pesos. The regular retail price is 350 pesos, so you get to save 50 pesos. The book is about learning how to conquer trials and sufferings. Kindly text your orders to 931 0376944. We also have a new Gospel Center discipleship material entitled Knowing Christ. It's available for only 150 pesos. Kindly text the number on your screen. Please do not also forget that we have an interactive midweek table talk every Wednesday live at 2 p.m. We have a series on the book of Revelation, and right now, we are talking about the tribulation period. Later on, we will likewise be talking about the rapture and the millennium. Please do not also forget our live intercession every Friday at 2 p.m. We would like you to join us in our prayers. There are a lot of things that we need to be praying for. So please join us every Friday at 2 p.m. Our International Bible Institute is now offering online teaching in church history. The deadline of enrollment would be on July 2. The start of online teaching would be July 7, 2020. The schedule of online teaching would be Tuesdays at 10 in the morning. Now I will personally facilitate this class Although it will come out Tuesday at 10 o'clock in the morning, it will be pinned on our Facebook page in International Bible Institute. So you can view it after 10 o'clock in the morning. Likewise, we are offering Old Testament 103, the Kingdom Period. You can enroll in Old Testament 103 as a correspondent student. The deadline of enrollment for Old Testament 103 is also on July 2. And here's some good news. We can deliver your IBI materials through LBC, or you can get your materials as well at the Living Word Center in Manawa. We'd also like to thank our partners and those who are our members who have been consistently giving to partner with us in the work of the Lord. We'd like to share our giving channels to those who would like to partner with us in the work of the Lord. You can deposit your love offerings to the following banks. Banco de Oro. Account name is LWCCCII. The account number is 001 we also have a BPI account. Account name is Living Word Christian Ministries, Cebu Incorporated. Account number is 10210234811. Finally, we have RCBC. Account name is LWCCCII. 
Account number is 1452005286. You may also send your love offerings and donations online through our website. Go to www.livingword.ph and click Give and then a dialog box comes out of it. Kindly click on your giving preferences. Good day once again, brothers and sisters. It's a good, good Sunday to celebrate the Lord's goodness in our lives. I'd like to greet once again our brethren from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao coming from all our Living Word Christian churches in Cebu. I'd also like to greet our churches abroad in UK, in the United States, as well as in Hong Kong. I'd also like to greet all of our other brethren tuning in to us from Canada, from the United States, from Europe, from the Middle East, from Southeast Asia. Good morning, brothers and sisters. And I pray that uh, this sermon will be a blessing to all of you. And so we will all be uh, reading Psalm 42 at this time. So may I request all of us to please rise from our seats as we read Psalm 42. The sermon today is Genuine Hope in God. Psalm 42, for the choir director, a masculine of the sons of Korah. As the deer pants for the water brook, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember, and I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go along with the throng and lead them in the procession to the house of God, with a voice of joy and thanksgiving, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you in despair, O my soul? And why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise Him for the help of His presence. O oh my God, my soul is in despair within me. Therefore, I remember you from the land of the Jordan and the peaks of Hermon from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep at the sound of your waterfalls. As your breakers, all your breakers and your waves have rolled over me. The Lord will command His loving kindness in the daytime. And his song will be with me in the night, a prayer to the God of my life. I will say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As a shattering of my bones, my adversaries revile me, while they say to me all day long, where is your God? Why are you in despair, O my soul? And why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God. For I shall yet praise Him, the help of my countenance and my God. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank You and bless You for this blessed time You've given us, O God. Once again, to be able to praise and worship You. And Lord, to navigate through the Word of God today. Lord, indeed, Your Word is a treasure. Your word is what provides hope and strength into our lives. And we thank you, O God, that you have given us this treasure. You have given us this gift. And what a blessing it is, Lord, most especially during times of crisis. We thank you, dear Lord, that through the word of God, we have been led into a revelation of who you are, a revelation of your ways. A revelation of your goodness and loving kindness. And Lord, that is what we desire to have once again today. We desire, Lord, a revelation of who you are and what you do in our lives. So that it would result in gratitude. It would result in worship. It would result in a greater love towards you. It might result in obedience, O oh God. And that we might serve you with all of our hearts. Lord, we seek the presence of your Holy Spirit today. We seek the blessing, Lord, to come upon your people who are watching right now. Open their minds and open their hearts, O God. Encourage them at this time, O Father. 
Remove every form of depression, anxiety, or worry, O oh God. And I pray, Lord, that you might put faith, the gift of faith, into the hearts of your people. I pray for myself, O oh God. I am merely your instrument. I am merely your mouthpiece, O oh God. And so I pray, O oh God, that you might speak through me, O oh Lord, that you might comfort your people. Lord, in my weakness, Lord, be my strength. Lord, be the one, Lord, to speak to me that I might speak, Lord, to your people with clarity and with passion. Lord, whatever is going to be achieved today, we will give you back the glory, the praises, and the thanks. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. So we will now go into Psalm 42. Actually, my son... Uh, AJ, who is a part-time vlogger, shared on Psalm 42. If you have not been able to listen to that series, I would like to invite you to visit All for Jesus Vlogs. And there you will find Psalm 42. As my son spoke about this psalm, I think about three or four times. And I think there are many, many lessons that you can actually learn from Psalm 42. And so my son likewise shared to me that Psalm 42 might be a good psalm to share, most especially during this time. Now we're on lockdown, and I'm sure that a lot of people are feeling very depressed, feeling very frustrated, because right now, Manila has taken over the oversight of this pandemic crisis, the IATF of uh, the national government is here right now to facilitate and expedite matters for us. And so I know that a lot of people right now are feeling frustrated. Uh, it's been about three months already and we thought that we would somehow be able to flatten the curve, but the curve has not yet been flattened and the cases continue to spike up. And so I'm sure that a lot of you are feeling that frustration right now. Maybe you're even depressed. And hopefully Psalm 42 might be a balm of healing to your soul, that it might provide encouragement to all of us. Now, this psalm is a, a very appropriate psalm, most especially if we will be able to overcome our anxiety and our depression. So I will be borrowing uh, a lot of things from the research work of my son. And in his introduction, he got to share about some of the things that began to happen in 2020. And of course, my hope is that you and I would have a 2020 vision this year. You know, these things that have been taking place are creating in us a realization of what is truly important in the sight of God. And so yes, the pandemic crisis is wrecking havoc, but maybe it's making our spiritual eyes clear. So let me just share to you what he shared at the introduction in his vlog. It goes, the year 2020 has brought depressing news from around the globe. There was the threat to a U.S.-Iran war, the downing of the Ukrainian plane in Iran, and the downing of the U.S. military plane in Afghanistan, the deadly wildfires in Australia, the volcano eruptions in the Philippines and Mexico, the flood in Indonesia, the earthquakes in Turkey, Iran, Jamaica, Russia, the avalanche in Kashmir, the locust plagues that started in Africa and moved into the Middle East and Asia. The death of Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and seven others. On top of all these, COVID-19 has been declared a pandemic. When he began this vlog series, uh, the statistics were at this point. He says, more than 180,000 have been infected. Well, as of this time, from 180,000, 9.3 million people have already been infected. 
And then when he shared this uh, vlog, he said that 7,000 have died. Well, brethren, as of this time, half a million people, about 500,000 people have already died. In the Philippines, all the cities and provinces in Luzon and some parts of Visayas and Mindanao have been placed on community quarantine. And so far as Cebu is concerned, we're back to ECQ. And in fact, from what I'm hearing from the news, it will be a much stricter uh, ECQ, a much stricter lockdown in our case. And as I mentioned to you, yes, it can be frustrating. It can be disappointing. In fact, in some parts of the Philippines, I would like to report to you some very sad news. There was a 73-year-old man who thought that he had uh, been contaminated with COVID-19, and so he had himself tested. The results had not yet come out, and yet the symptoms seemingly were that of COVID-19. He could no longer wait for the results, whether it was negative or positive. Guess what he did? He committed suicide. When the tests came out, it came out negative. What a sad story that is. I've also heard the story of a pastor's daughter who took her own life. I mean, you would like to think that uh, pastor's daughters would be equipped with the Word of God. They've heard so many sermons and so many preachings from their own dad, from from his own pulpit, and you would think that they would have the strength for times like this. But even she succumbed to depression and she took her own life. There was a college student, probably second year college in one of the universities here in the Philippines who also took her own life. And we're thinking, how could that happen? How could somebody so young Take her own life. But you see, that is exactly what is happening right now. Now, my son also shared statistics coming from the Department of Health in the Philippines. And according to that report, it says, the average age a first depressive episode occurs is in the mid-20s. Depression among the youth and young adults have led to higher suicide rates among their age group. World Health Organization reported that eight in every 100,000 Filipinos commit suicide. Of this figure, six are males, while two are females aged 15 to 29 years old. These are very, very young people. So during these times, brethren, what do we cling on to? I believe if there is one word that I think is a very important commodity in our day and time right now, it is the word hope. But of course, the kind of hope that we are looking for is a genuine kind of hope. We do not want a hope that has a placebo effect, merely psychological, but really has no bearing. That kind of a hope does not really last. That kind of a hope is actually fleeting. We don't need that kind of a hope. What you and I need, brothers and sisters, is genuine hope. And the big question, of course, is where do you find genuine hope? And friends, my answer has always been this, and my answer is still firm. Our genuine hope is only found in God and in God alone. And I say that, brothers and sisters, with firm conviction in my heart. I believe that with my whole heart. There are some people who say things, but they're not really convinced about what they are saying. Sometimes that happens in advertising campaigns. I've been part of the 
advertising world. And I know that people have to be very convincing when they're actually endorsing a particular product. But I, I know how it works. Some people endorse a product, but they don't actually believe in the product. And so far as I am concerned, brothers and sisters, I truly and honestly believe that genuine hope is only found in God. Now, I know that's a challenge. We're in very difficult times. We're in unprecedented territory. And this is a kind of territory that only you and I are navigating right now. But then again, friends, we still find hope in God. Circumstances might change. Situations might change. But we have an unchanging God. And the Word of God, brothers and sisters, never ever changes at all. I'd like to share to you the three occasions by which this psalmist found hope in God. And I'd like to borrow once again the outline of my son. In verses 1 to 6a, he speaks about hope in God, though he seems distant. Then in verses 6b, all the way to verse 8, hope in God, though he seems harsh. And in verses 9 to 11, hope in God, though he seems indifferent. That is found once again in verses 9 to 11. So let's dive in and let's have a look at verses 1 to 6a as we hope in God, though he seems distant. Verse 1 reads, As the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul pants for you, O God. As I have shared to you, there are vast uh, tracts of land that are deserts in Israel. In fact, the Negev Desert is about... 63% of the land area that is now occupied by the nation of Israel. And so the most important commodity in the desert would be that of water. And so this is something that we have to realize when you and I are in the desert. Now, not only is water the rarest commodity in the desert, it is the most important thing. And friends, i just like to share to you that you can go several days without food, but not without water. If you recall, the Lord Jesus Christ himself fasted for 40 days. And not only that, we find that Moses himself also fasted for 40 days. And I recall that in our own church, during the late uh, 1980s or maybe early 1990s, we used to go to the prayer mountain in Manila. And as we went there, some of us went through periods of fasting. I recall having fasted twice for seven days. But there were other brethren who actually fasted for two weeks or for 18 days. And I particularly recall a brother who fasted for 40 days, not only once, but twice. And if my memory serves me right, he even went for a third time. So we were all able to go without food, but not without water. Without water, you and I can die. The most that you and I can survive without water would be three days. But after three days, you and I will slowly die. We would die of dehydration. Just like to share to you something that I found out. The human body is approximately 50 to about 75% water. There's been research that's been done which shows that as little as 1% dehydration already has a bad effect on your mood, your attention span, the sharpness of your memory, and even the motor coordination of your body. Eventually, without water, you die. That is why the psalmist saw himself here as a deer in the desert. 
Now, one of the things that I'd like to show you on PowerPoint is uh, the Dan uh, Nature Reserve, where you find the waters that actually flow into the River Jordan and into the Sea of Galilee. This water actually comes from the mountains of Mount Hermon during the rainy season and also uh, after winter when the snow begins to melt, it now melts and the water begins to flow into this reserve in Dan. Dan is in the northernmost part of Israel. And that is where Israel gets its water supply. And so my imagination is that uh, the deer would look for brooks of water such as this. It would look for streams of water such as we find, for example, in the River Jordan. Why? Because of all the jumping around, all the running, you know, the deer eventually becomes very, very thirsty. Not only thirsty, but desperately thirsty. Now, of course, what the psalmist was talking about here is not a desperate thirst for water. What he is talking about here is a desperate thirst for God. In this difficult situation that he was in, in this crisis that he was in, what he was actually thirsting for was God himself. And I'd like to make this relevant in our case. I'd like to ask you this question. In this pandemic crisis that you and I are going through, what is it that you are thirsting for? I'm sure that you're thirsting for a lot of things. As I mentioned to you in my previous sermon, what we want to happen is that we revert back or return back to the old normal. But the old normal is being pushed violently away by this new normal. And it's something that you and I are not used to. This is something that we are just only now navigating. And obviously, there are certain things in our most recent past that we would like to return, that we would like to come back. But then again, we're being deprived of all these things. And yet, my big question is, what is it that you are thirsting for? My hope and my prayer is that you are thirsting for God. My hope and my prayer is that you are not drifting away from God. My hope and my prayer is that you are not losing your thirst for God. Our only hope for survival in this crisis, if we are continually thirsting for God. And only God, by the way, can quench that thirst that you and I are feeling in our hearts right now. Now, this psalmist was desperate for God's presence, and his desperation does not only stem from the fact that he was going through a crisis. This thirst that he was having was stemming from the fact of his understanding of who God is. Now, we need to understand who our God is, and that can only come if you and I continually study and meditate on the Word of God. And when you know who your God is, in times like these, you will definitely thirst for Him. Now the word for God here is the Hebrew word Elohim, which is used all throughout this first section of our study. In fact, in Psalm 42, uh, it refers to God as Elohim 13 times, 1, 3, 13 times, while Yahweh occurs only once. Now, Elohim is in the plural form of El, which is the most basic word for deity. Many Bible scholars have seen this as a proof of the doctrine of the Trinity, but I just like to say there is so much more to the word Elohim. This form has been called the plural of majesty or the intensive plural because it implies that all the fullness of deity is concentrated in this one God. Now get this. It is saying all 
the fullness of deity is concentrated on this one God. What is it that comes into your mind when you think of God? And why is it that you run to God, most especially during times like this? You run to God because you see God as a God who is able to help you. A God who is able to deliver you. And why do you run to God who is able to help and deliver you? Because you see Him as a God of power. Now think about the meaning of this word. If you think about all the power that is found in this entire universe, and obviously the source of all that power is God, understand that this word means that all that power is concentrated in this one God. All the power in this universe is concentrated in this one God. And so if, if that is true, then genuine hope can only be found in this one God. This plurality of majesty this intensive plural that we find in the name of God is what provides true and genuine hope for each and every one of us. And that's why, friends, I pray that this might be true. You know, the, the word in the Old Testament conveys the idea of God's ultimate supremacy above all other gods all other gods are false but the god that we serve is real the god that we serve is alive the god that we serve is present the bible says in him we live and move and have our being yes you and i might feel that he is distant you and i might feel that he is absent you and i might feel that is not there for us but he is there brothers and sisters believe it the book of esther is one good example in the book of esther you will never ever find the name of god in fact you will only find the hidden name of god through an acronym or through the acrostic uh, method that they use in the book of Esther. But otherwise, you will not find the name of God. But then if you look at the providence of God, the dealings of God, how God raised up Mordecai, how God raised up Esther to become queen, how God delivered the nation of Israel, not only those who were in the Persian kingdom, but even those in the land of Israel, how God delivered them. You see a God who was ever present. And that is the God that you and I serve. Now, if this is who our God is, then this should really cause us to desperately seek Him, most especially in this COVID 19 crisis now verse 2 reads my soul thirsts for god for the living god when shall i come and appear before god now let's do a little word study here now the word that i'm particularly interested in is the word soul now the word soul or nephes in hebrew is mentioned six times in the psalm, it refers to the seat of the psalmist's inner desires and emotions. And basically what this is saying is that the deepest need, the deepest longing, the deepest desire that the psalmist had was God himself. And that's the question I'd like to ask you right now. I know that you and I have many, many needs right now. I mean, there's, there's a multitude of needs that are continually running through our minds. But let me ask you, what is, what is the thing that you desire the most? What is the deepest longing and desire of your heart? I'm praying hoping that your deepest desire is God himself. That is what we find here in the case of the psalmist. Hopefully, this is what we are thirsty for. Notice here that he says, My soul thirsts for God 
for the living God. Now the word living God means source of life. And if you really think about how things are with us. Now there are some brethren of ours who are getting sick. And by the way, we're, we're thankful to God that we're hearing testimonies of them being healed even from this COVID-19. And so we're thankful to God that our God is a prayer answering God. He has performed some miracles of healing in the case of some of our brethren. And again, we rejoice in God who is our healer. But think about this. If God is the source of our life, that means He is the one who is sustaining us right now. He is the one who is preserving us right now. He is the source of our breath. He is the source of our own human existence. And so if we're strong and we're healthy, who should we be thanking for? Who should we be thanking at this time? We should be thanking God because God is the source of our life. And if He is the source of our lives, shouldn't we desperately seek for Him? I believe that is what this psalm is teaching us. We should be desperate for God. Now in this psalm, we find that the psalmist was asking a question. His question in the latter part of verse 2 is, When shall I come and appear before God? When shall I come and appear before God? Now, this makes us curious. What was the life situation of the psalmist for him to be able to say, When, when shall I appear before God? Is the situation like he was on exile in another land, like for example, Babylon? Was he in Babylon? Was he in Persia at this time? And because he was removed away from Jerusalem where the temple was, he was longing somehow that they could return back as exiles into the land of Israel and then rebuild the temple and thereby be able to worship again. Well, we're not given... Uh, much background in regard to this psalm. So we don't know, but that's possible. Another possibility could be that um, he, was, he was probably in a far place and in this far place, and by the way, we will see later on that he was situated in Mount Hermon and we don't really know why he was situated in Mount Hermon. Now, regardless of the situation, the point is, this psalmist wanted to be in Jerusalem. He wanted to be in the festivals. He wanted to be in those joyous occasions when the people of Israel would gather together. And in those joyous occasions, they would worship the Lord together and experience the, the presence of God in their midst. This was what he was longing for. And the phrase here, appear before God, was a phrase that can be translated literally as see the face of God. God's presence is often represented in the Hebrew word panim or face of God. God's presence was manifested in a temple as we see in passages like 2 Samuel and many others where the sons of Korah had served. By the way, the psalm was composed by the sons of Korah. Uh, one of the places we visited was the Temple Institute. And DJ and I had a picture uh, with uh, one of the uh, mannequins who was wearing Levitical uh, clothing, the, the clothing of the Levitical priests. This would somehow give you an idea how they must have looked like at that time during these festivals. Now, here we find that the psalmist, who was probably from the clan of Korah, missed the manifest presence of God in the temple as well as the joyous festivals during the pilgrimages. So the kind of feeling that he was feeling at this time was a sense of isolation. And I think that 
is what you and I are feeling right now. We've been isolated. We've been quarantined. We've not been able to gather together as a congregation. And we're missing each other. We're missing those people who are beside us. We're missing those people at our backs. We're missing the, the handshakes and the warm greetings, the smiles. We miss the uh, praise and worship. We miss the preaching of God's word as, as we learn and listen to God's word together with all of the congregation. That's exactly what we're missing right now. And so just like this psalmist, we are feeling this, this sense of isolation. And we want to gather together. We want to be in the church facility once again. We want to go to the center once again. We want to park our cars and go up the stairs or ride the elevators once again and, and smile and greet our brothers and sisters. That is what we want. We want the fellowship of the brethren. But sadly, that is something that we cannot enjoy at this moment. And so yes, we can relate to what the sons of Korah were feeling, we can relate to the sense of isolation. And to a certain extent, we feel as if God is distant. I mean, we're trying to recreate these things in our minds every Sunday, right? We're trying to recreate the, the, the atmosphere, the environment. But even then, as we try to recreate that environment, we know it's different. It's still different. It's still different when we're together with God's people. But then again, friends, regardless of this situation, although God may seem distant, although our brethren might seem to be distant, as Paul would say, I'm gathered together with you in spirit. We have the Holy Spirit within us. That is why God is with us in the midst of this crisis. Now in verse 3, we find the emotional meltdown of the psalmist. He says, My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all day long, Where is your God? You know what was the thing that was weighing heavily on the heart of the psalmist? It was the question, Where is your God? Now, this was a taunt that was being leveled against the psalmist. We don't know exactly who was leveling this taunt against him. But again, this was a question that was bothering him. Some people were asking him, some people were taunting him, Where is your God? I thought God was going to help you in this situation. Where is your God in your business? Where is your God in, 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 that you speak about in your church? Where is your God right now in, in this situation? I believe this was the thing that's what, that was weighing heavily on the heart of the psalmist. A taunt by those who had conquered Israel and brought them to exile where they were separated from temple worship. That's a possibility here. That this was a taunt by those who had exiled them. Of course, we're not sure, as I mentioned to you, because we're not given a lot of details. Or was the question merely a taunt by the enemies of the sons of Korah? Or was it a taunt by those who were skeptics? We do not know for sure. But regardless of the situation, this was something that was weighing heavily in his own heart. And our friends, our skeptical friends, might be saying the same thing as a result of the rapid spread of this pandemic uh, that is taking place in our city, most especially right now. Now that we are back to ECQ, back to square one, start from scratch all over again, it's as if the three months that we were in quarantine did not serve its purpose. So yes, maybe some people are asking us, where is your God? Where is your God whom you said would deliver you? Where is your God whom you said will, will bring about salvation for you? I believe that weighs heavily in our hearts. And you know what? The result 
in the case of the psalmist was an emotional meltdown. That is why it says here, my tears have been my food day and night. I've been crying day and night. My tear ducts have, have become dry because I've been pouring my heart out. Tears have continually been flowing. I don't know what to do. God seems to be distant. God seems to be away from me. And the taunt of these people is tormenting my mind. And I don't know how to answer them. I don't know how to answer them at this time. Probably that is something that you are feeling right now. You're eating the bread of tears. And you're having this emotional meltdown because you feel this sense of abandonment. In verse 4, it says, These things I remember and I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go along with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with a voice of joy and thanksgiving, a multitude-keeping festival. Now, the superscription of Psalm 42 starts with the phrase, to the choir master, which appears in 55 psalms. Although the precise meaning and significance of the phrase is unclear, it might indicate that the psalm belonged to Israel's proper David authorized, divinely authorized worship, which was performed by the Korahites. And again, as I mentioned to you, I, I showed you the picture through PowerPoint. That is how they may have looked like. And, you know, I've been to some occasions uh, in Israel, like the celebration of the Bar Mitzvah. And boy, is it a, a joyous celebration. It's a joyous occasion. There's, there's singing, there's dancing, the playing of instruments, the beating of drums, and they're dancing in the streets, and people are moving around, they're joining in. It's such a, a joyous occasion. And that is somehow a miniature sneak preview into probably what was happening during those times. I could just imagine how much they must have missed these joyous occasions. Now, the Korahites were given the responsibilities for the tabernacle and eventually in the temple as well during the reigns of King David and King Solomon. One of their responsibilities was to serve in the temple through singing and playing musical instruments. They were the ancient worship team. I'd like to read a paraphrase to you, and probably this is helpful just for us to better digest what the psalmist was trying to say here. In a paraphrase, it would go something like this. As I pour out my soul, I miss the times when I would go with the multitude and lead the people in a procession to the house of God with joyful shouts and songs of praise. A multitude celebrating a festival. Now, I'm sure that with this paraphrase, many of our worship leaders would be able to relate to this. Maybe even the worship team can relate to this. I believe the worship team misses leading the people in worship, seeing all of those hands being raised up, seeing people with their heads lifted up to heaven, some with tears, tears of joy, some with smiles on their faces. And even some of us who may not be members of the worship team, as we look around and we see the people worshiping together with us, we are infected by that joy, by that passion, by that fire, and by that energy. And most definitely we miss that. We miss serving God. We miss doing the things that we used to do most especially on a Sunday. So this feeling of isolation is, is killing us. It is killing us. We decide to serve God once again. And so, notice here the escalation of this despair and this cry of the psalmist as we read verses 5 and 6. 
It goes, why are you in despair, O oh my soul? And why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise Him. For the help of His presence, O oh my God, my soul is in despair within me. Now in the light of this passage, I'd like to ask you some questions. Questions like, what do you do when you're having an emotional meltdown? What do you do when you're feeling that God is distant from you? What do you do when you are physically distanced from the brethren and you are unable to worship together with them? What do you do when you are missing all of these things terribly? Well, the psalmist gives us a solution here. He says, why are you in despair, O my soul? And why have you become disturbed within me? Then he says, hope in God, for I shall again praise Him. You know what he was doing in the midst of this emotional meltdown? This feeling of isolation, this feeling of desperation? You know what he did? He practiced self-counseling. He preached to himself, yes, I know we're so used to going to a pastor or going to a counselor, asking them for their wisdom whenever we are in trouble, whenever we are depressed, whenever you and I need something, we go to them or we, maybe we go to a mature brother or a mature sister. And we ask for prayers and we ask them, please help me, what do I do in this situation? Please give me some sound advice. What do the scriptures say about this? We're so used to that. But now we're in quarantine. Now, of course, we can still message each other. We can still call each other. But the physical presence, the face-to-face the -face encounter that we used to have, the, the tap on our shoulder, the warmth of the clasping of hands in prayer is something that we miss. And so now what do we do that we sense this, this isolation? Well, I believe that one of the things that God is teaching us is to depend on Him. Not so much to depend on other people. Because God has isolated us. So what do we do, we do right now? We practice self-counseling. We preach to ourselves. That is exactly what the psalmist did. And what did he preach to himself? Hope in God. Now another word study here is very important. Hope is from a Hebrew word which connotes a patient standing in wait for one greater than oneself. Let me just repeat that once again. It connotes a patient standing in wait for one greater than oneself. Now, I'm sure that some of you have learned the art of waiting nowadays, most especially when you go to the grocery. You probably recall the time when we were still in the old normal, when um, after getting all the, the groceries and all the things that we need, we would line up and probably in about five minutes, we're done. But now, we have a long queue. We have long lines. And sometimes you could wait for something like 20, may, maybe even 30 minutes of waiting. And finally, we're done and over with after a long period of time. But remember this. We're not just waiting here. We're waiting for somebody who is greater than ourselves somebody who is much much greater than ourselves and that's why we take comfort in that now in psalm 42 the object of the psalmist hope is in his god elohim we studied that word the only source of genuine hope you cannot hope in luck because there's no such thing as luck you cannot hope in the economy right now the economy is in a mess. You cannot hope in anything concrete right now, not in any institution right now. Even our health system is overwhelmed and is beginning to fail. 
So where do we place our hope? Only God is the only source of genuine hope. By the way, hope here is in the imperative mood. Now what does that indicate to you? It is a command. So the psalmist here was not only preaching to himself, not only was he counseling himself, he was commanding himself and he was saying, hope in God. He was acting as if he was a general talking to a private and he was saying, hope in God. And I believe that's sometimes what we need to do. We need to be emphatic. We need to command ourselves and say, hope in God. When we're losing it, when we're having this emotional meltdown, when we're breaking down in tears, we have to stop and say, hope in God. Command ourselves to hope in God. That is what we see here. Now we find that the psalmist was confidently expectant that he will again praise Elohim who will deliver him. So not only must we preach to ourselves, we must command ourselves to wait patiently on God in hope. That is what you and I need to do. Now why should we trust Elohim? Now this psalm gives us the various facets of Elohim. The psalmist describes Elohim as the living God, the source of life. Ultimately, it's, it's not the vaccine, it's, it's still God. Then in verses 6a and verse 11, as his salvation. Salvation ultimately is not in the health system. And then in verses 5, 11, and 8, we find that the hope here is in a personal God. Ultimately, it's not in any person. And in verse 9, we find here that hope is in his rock. That is God himself. Ultimately, it's not even our government. So our hope is in God alone because of who Elohim is. The psalmist is saying he alone is our genuine hope. That's why the psalmist was right in verse 5 when he said, Why are you in despair, O my soul? And why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise Him. Our genuine hope is only found in God and in God alone. Now at this time, I'd just like to ask you, and most especially those of you who are probably viewing me for the very first time, where is your hope? If you're hoping in Government institutions, the government institutions all over the world are failing. If you're hoping for the success of the health system, again, I'm not saying that we should not be thankful for the government nor thankful for our health system. We should be thankful. However, even they are being overwhelmed. Where do you put your hope right now? The economy is failing. The only hope that you can find, dear brothers and sisters, is in God alone. And that is the question I would like to ask you, most especially if you've been listening to me for the very first time. God is your only hope. And not only is He your hope in this pandemic crisis, more than anything else, He is your hope for the rest of eternity. And that is something that you and I have to look forward to. The fragility of life is something that we have come to realize in this pandemic crisis. Remember at the introduction what I sh shared to you, 9.3 million people have been infected. 500,000 people have already died. So what does that tell you? It speaks about the fragility of life. Now the question is, what happens after you die? If ever COVID-19 catches up with you, what happens to you when you die? Will you go to heaven? Or will you go to hell? Now you might say, I don't believe in those things. Believe me, they are for real. Now you might say, you've never been there. But the word of God has always proven itself to be true. All the prophecies relating to the first coming of Jesus Christ were all fulfilled. 
the prophecies relating to the nation of Israel were all fulfilled. So if all those things were fulfilled, there is no reason to believe that they will not happen. And if God says that once a man dies, it is appointed for him to be judged, better believe it. And so the question is, where will you pin your hope? I hope you're not pinning your hope on your good deeds nor on your good works. Your good works are good for nothing. I'm sorry to say. The Bible says that our good deeds, our righteous deeds are nothing but filthy rags in the sight of God. Only Jesus has satisfied the holiness and the justice of God. And that was only satisfied, how? By His death on the cross. Only His death on the cross pays for the debts that you and I owe God. And we owe Him a lot because every single day we do sin against Him. And every sin that we commit needs to be judged. Every sin that we commit needs to be condemned. But Jesus made a way. And that way is himself. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So come to Jesus. Accept the free gift of eternal life that he gives to all. That he is offering to all. And I pray that as you come to Christ, you might experience this new life that many believers now have. He is your only hope, not only for this pandemic crisis. He is your hope for the rest of eternity if you make Him the Lord and the Savior of your life. Repent of your sins and come to Him and He will change you and you will never ever be the same. Well, we have just covered part one of our study and I think I've gone over an hour already. So as much as I really planned that uh, we would complete all the three parts of our study today, it seems like I can only cover uh, the first part. And there's so much meat. I, I can breeze through this and maybe finish this in about another 10 minutes. But I don't want to do that because there's so much meat in Psalm 42. So I will just have to continue the following Sunday. But I hope you were blessed and I hope that you will decide to bless other people as well. Could you please like and share this video? Share it on Viber, share it on Messenger, tag as many people as you can. Uh, please put this on your Facebook wall. Let this be heard. So we're coming out both um, on Facebook as well as on YouTube. You can check it out, Living Word YouTube. And of course, there are many Living Word, uh, Living Word uh, websites, but you can check ours because we have a logo and you, you know our logo. So again, um, before we go, let's just close in prayer. Let's thank the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you and bless you for this blessed time you've given us, O God. We thank you, dear Jesus, that you have not failed us. You have not forsaken us, and thank you for the preaching of your word. Indeed, Lord, we have been energized, we have found hope in you, and we pray that this hope will linger long and will strengthen and edify us, not only us, but our families as well. So whatever has been achieved today, we give you back all the glory, praises, and thanks. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all, my wife Marie and my son AJ, my team, uh, who does all the work uh, for this video. would like to say goodbye uh, to all of you. God bless, and we'll see you next time.